Jacques Riyad, Mohamed Yarrow. Three points for him in his match against Liam Le and three points for Anish Giri. Congratulations. Thank you. And we're just standing here talking and uh, we're talking about uh, one F3. Was that the biggest shock for you today? Yeah, no, I really appreciated that. I already <laughs> spoke to David and I think the inspiration comes from the line E4, C5, Knight C3, D6 and F3. Oh, okay. That's, um, that's what he played already before. It's one of uh, idea of um, Dutch uh, chess school and um, it's, it's quite clever. <laughs> and uh, he took it to next level, so he thought, let's play F3 and move on. I thought it was very smart because, see, you gain the psychological edge and you have a small disadvantage on the board, but yeah. if you prepare it very well and you know all the subtleties, like 94, you neutralize that advantage on the board, mm -hmm. you keep the psychological advantage. And you see, the moment he got an equal position, basically, you know, that game might have been drawn, but the match was eventually over. Exactly. We're talking about Magnus's 1-F3, super surprising opening against Jan Christoph Duda. But uh, Anish, your match against Eric Hansen, you got that one win you needed to win the match. What has today been like? It was very hard because I didn't get any psychological edge uh, at all. <laughs> I played 1e4. That's really bad. 1f3 then, maybe? 1e4 is the worst move you can play from <laughs> psychological edge. Immediately, you you know, you show your cards. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I was, uh, was a tough match. Um, I was playing... He was playing well. Mm -hmm. He was playing well. I have to give him that. And the first game, um, it was just a good game um, on his part. At the critical moment, he neutralized my initiative. And in the second game, um, it was just an opening. Uh, Thing where it led to a draw. I think there was a similar line in my Knight, of course, mm -hmm. so I was able to recollect that. And in the game where it was crucial, uh, it was very tense the mm -hmm. entire time. And uh, at some point, um, I, I cracked, uh, but then he cracked uh, back. Mm -hmm. And in the time scramble, I was I was very lucky. Yeah, we could maybe take up the analysis board. So so this game that you eventually won that became decisive, Anish, uh, the bar was uh, all the way over to Eric's side. Uh, what was your thinking here, if we also bring up the analysis? Yeah. You know, when, I, when I'm looking at this and David is there sitting like my teacher, you know? <laughs> it reminds me when I was at class and the teacher is like, you haven't done your homework, have you? <laughs> and you come, you're like, yes, sir, I'm guilty today, you know, I'll do my, I'll do my best tomorrow, I'll try to do better tomorrow. I'm very sorry, David, uh, that I got this position. And on the right side of the board, I'm worse. On the left side of the board, I'm worse. In the center, I'm worse. I I'm wish everyone sorry. acknowledged this. Uh, no, I, I, saw, I saw the joy on your face. No, not the joy. The, what is the word? You know, the dismissiveness or like disgust. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he just, he just uh, an, the owner of this position, uh, the owner of this position uh, with the white pieces. Uh, yeah, it, it's for, for David, it's just, it's just a greasy human yeah. being. It's just, <laughs> uh, it's just beneath him and, uh, and the other grand, grandmasters on but the this stage. Is, this is the critical moment, right, Anish? Yeah, yeah. The, well, Eric practically speaking, Bishop f6, king g7, uh, there is some uh, brutal so way. So remember. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I sorry. can follow, yes. There is some brutal way, a uh, computer was showing, that queen e7, the bishop f6, king g7, it is such a, uh, such a safe king for him, and mine is permanently weak. I had hopes that I would be able to trade the rook and somehow, uh, like rook b2, rook b2, and somehow, because of the opposite color bishops, survive. But, you know, with the opposite color bishops, the problem is that... Um, the end games are, of course, uh, you have a chance to escape, but in, with queen zone you get at under attack because you don't control the dark squares. The queen can penetrate, and uh, maybe black would even be smarter already to penetrate earlier. Mm. So yeah, it was, it was not really uh, working well for me. And after bishop fate, I was very happy to get an f6, and then then I still found for him while I was thinking. At first, I was very excited because I'm coming with the battery. But then I realized that there is no threat because of rook takes b3 after queen d3 and queen a2 check, and so. Uh, that's why I realized his best move in that position was uh, queen a8, a very, very subtle move, mm -hmm. preparing queen to d8. <coughs> and I kind of noticed that. And I was really, uh, I, I would play something like queen e2, maybe hoping for queen e5. Uh, I, I'm still in the game, practically speaking. But um, yeah, he somehow just forgot about my threat. He mm -hmm. said for, he forgot that after his move, uh, there is no more uh, sack on b3. And then I just got to set up the battery and uh, just checkmate on h7. Very lucky. All right, and you ended up winning this game. That was uh, crucial. What has it been like to play in the Oslo uh, eSports arena today? Uh, yeah, I'm very happy to get on the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm generally like, um, uh, I, I like that. I'm uh, not, 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 not the most confident type, so I'm, I'm happy to, to, to play one good, uh, good match today and uh, uh, see what comes uh, next. Mm -hmm. uh, every day here uh, is a tough fight. I remember that from uh, the finals last year. Mm -hmm. it's, it's always tough and uh, uh, ups and downs. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward. Every match is going to be exciting. Yeah, and I should have in my head now who you're facing tomorrow, but actually I don't. Do you? 
No, no, I also don't. <laughs> See, I'm it's becoming okay. a chess player now. I'm yeah, not checking it tomorrow. Yeah, as, as your chess strength improves, your you know the, the rest of uh, of life skills uh, deteriorate. That's what we all go through, and you're experiencing it right now, as we speak. And it's young Christoph Duda that you're facing, and you're mentioning confidence. So he lost in three games today to Magnus. You're the winner yeah, today. But but, that... but uh, the team of uh, young Christoph uh, they have an upper hand over me because I played uh, table tennis against his trainer oh. yesterday at the opening ceremony, mm. and um, he he showed significant superiority. So I think uh, overall, um, when it comes to um, me against the the, the Polish uh, delegation here. Uh, I have some catching up to do. All right. Well, how have you been enjoying Oslo so far, Anish? No, very good. Uh, I have to say, though, I never realized, but uh, the sushi here, you guys really have a thing for sushi. Yep. I mean, I love sushi, but it's impossible to find a restaurant that is not a sushi yeah. place. Even if it doesn't have sushi in the name, you come <laughs> in and there is a sushi in the menu. It's literally impossible to eat something else than uh, sushi yeah, or yeah. an occasional pizza, perhaps. Yeah. So I, I, as a suggestion, I do think uh, you guys should uh, spread out a little bit, uh, explore some other great cuisine. My wife is Georgian. Um, mm. You know the. What is a Georgian specialty? <laughs> okay, you have to visit my family-in-law. It's it's a, it's not a matter of a short conversation. It's a matter of a long dinner. Ooh, okay, enjoy. all right. I remember I asked you once, what's your specialty in the kitchen, and you said boiled eggs. That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure if we should take food advice from Anish Giri, but you are an expert on sushi, having lived in Japan. Yeah, I do love sushi. I do love sushi. But uh, I, I remember in France also, it's a big thing. I've traveled the world a lot. And uh, there are some peculiar peculiarities in France. There's a lot of sushi as well. Mm -hmm. In Italy, there is only Italian food. There is nothing else. That's true. Um, only carbs. Uh, yes, and uh, it gets tough after a while. <laughs> but I have to say that uh, I've been here before, but only here, only now. Uh, did it strike me that, yeah, the, I, I guess it has to do with the water being nearby and salmon being very fresh. Yeah. And I do love salmon and I do love sushi. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's really a lot of different sushi. We'll try to find some other food to feed. And you. here, by the way, as well, uh, as a matter of fact, a sushi bar. there is a great sushi place <laughs> in here as well at the Champions <laughs> Chess Tour. So um, no, I'm, I'm really happy, but uh, it, it's remarkable that uh, it's because it's not Norwegian cuisine, right? It's, it's a Japanese Absolute, cuisine. Yeah. So you, uh, you take uh, cuisine from elsewhere and you, um, yeah, you take it to a whole new level. I, I, there are definitely not as many sushi restaurants in Japan as there are here. Really? Interesting fact. Well, Anish, uh, we're going to find some other food for you so you don't have to eat sushi for seven more days. Congratulations on your win today. Thank you. And thanks for joining us in the studio.